Hello and welcome to the 2021 Texas State Disc Golf Championships in Tyler, Texas. We are here at Lindsay Park, the Dogwood Course. This is the tough one. This is in the woods. We've got Big Germ and we've got Primetime Yules. We've got Big Barry commentary. Let's get into that Grip 6 low profile. First off, we got Nico LaCastro. We have some familiar faces for you guys today. Nico coming off of that nice win over there in Waco. Paul McBeth coming off of a lot of nice wins through his career. And another familiar face to Texas, Bradley Williams. Mask off, it is Bradley. And Ricky Wysocki. Rounding off the card, Ricky, obviously, he's coming into this event as the favorite. He likes that position, and he's even said, I've earned the right to be called the favorite. I'm going to embrace that, and, and we get a, a wonderful opportunity to see four of the hottest players on tour take on this incredibly technically challenged course. Starting off on hole one, par three, 474 feet downhill, and there are a bunch of options as far as going up and over but none of them are really that great at the end really any shot that is accurate is going to require a little bit of that last second plinko action to get a good look for the two nico lacastro certainly a player who uh his preferred flight line matches the angle of the up and over anheuser to try to get that late fade. Might even try going for the S turn down the middle. Or the right into the middle. Yeah, that's the tree that you're kind of looking at oh, off right the tee. Oh, right through it. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if you don't get completely over it, then you really don't have a chance the birdie just hitting those limbs alone is it's just an easy par from there i do believe that there is a pure route low but it's only about 10 feet wide the whole way all the way to the pin but there is a route where you if you pure it you're not going to hit a tree mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it paul's probably going to go up and over and certainly is and if this gets a little bit of a lift that Oh, you just saw the very end. Let's get into the mind of Bradley Williams. When I step up to a gap, two things go through my mind. The angle of the disc and the apex of the curve. You got to pick your landing spot and then rewind the flight back to the tee pad. You're looking for the angle, and you're looking for the line. One of the main dangers of playing a course like Dogwood is being in between discs and not being confident in the swing you're about to take. It's, you have to be confident, you have to be committed. What makes you good on the disc golf course is being in a certain mindset. You gotta find that one word that frames your mindset on and off the course. Confidence, commitment, consistency. Those are some of the words that I use. <laughs> some good points from Bradley. He's always breaking down the game as far as the physical side of it, as far as the mental side of it. He's always trying to find that upper edge. Not sure if Bradley's going to shed the mask this round, but uh, you got a little glimpse of his face in the intro for the Grip 6 low profile, but I think he's pretty comfortable wearing the, uh, wearing the mask. I feel like people like to go over the top because there's these initial trees that if you get behind, there's a wall of then guardian trees that kind of make like a jail-like uh, mm -hmm. wall right there that he just barely gets past. And that takes that out. It kind of takes the deuce, I feel like, out of, out of the equation as far as like maybe Bradley's power or some other people unless you get that perfect flight. And Ricky going to go with Halo Destroyer. 
And I would be surprised to see him do anything other than what the rest of the car did. And sure enough, he's going up and over and he's going to try to play that Plinko game as well. And this has got a little bit more distance on it. This could be good. Oh, you got through all the way. Sweet. Sick. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like he's somewhere in circle two. But the way that this the basket slopes away downhill the whole way, even if you do get a drive near Brad's, you just can't run it. So it just makes it such a difficult hold. Got it, Paul. Easily yeah. the, the hardest hole on the course. That was the softest shot I've ever seen anybody throw in the history of disc golf right there. Paul finding himself in an awkward spot and put, pitches it upside down to get that ground play with the sand. That was a very nice touch. Ricky, are you kidding me? That's how you're going to start the tournament off? <laughs> really? The 65 feet back edge of circle two and really should be surprised, I guess. Yeah, but you saw him. He got that drive farther than everybody. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily higher to go left. He got it past all of that stuff, and that's why he was able yep. to kind of get that back door action. Yep. And Brad is in for the par. Nice putt, Rick. Thank you. And Paul, after that nifty little upside down pitch up, he's going to take his par, and Nico will tap in his. Like and let's head over to hole two, where we're going to get a hole breakdown from Paul Ulibarri. I'm Paul Ulibarri with today's Bushnell hole breakdown. You can find the Sport 850 rangefinder at the link in the description. Hole two here at Dogwood is pretty straightforward. Hit the gap at 196 feet and you will secure a look at birdie. Miss the gap and you could be victim of the winding creek down the middle of the fairway. Let's see how it plays out. And that creek really is a devastating bunker for so many tee shots. Uh oh, someone came to play. Scoop it in. <laughs> and Ricky's parking that one. Beautiful disc selection and accuracy. We're going to see that one again. Uh oh, someone came to play. Scoop it in. <laughs> Good shot. Thank you. Perfect flight. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's how you start the tournament off. <laughs> that's sick. Only two birdies on hole one. Kevin Jones, the other. Uh, and this needs to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It does. Yeah. Seemed like it was kind of a little inside, but that, I feel like that you, you kind of take on one extra mm -hmm. tree with that inside route. If Nico didn't have the perfect amount of Anheuser on that, that is catching inside edge and probably oh, dropping into right the creek. Just be safe, please. And that will, oh, is that? Oh, my goodness. He may have gotten very lucky there. That would be probably the only time this weekend that you'll see somebody not up top and safe at the same time. This is a pretty tough shot with a backhand. You're really trying to throw it straighter and not really wanting to get, like, the right... <sighs> Ooh. finish you know if you throw it straight then you can kind of get to circle's edge but as mm -hmm. soon as you try to like get cute and put a lot of anheuser on mm -hmm. it you bring a lot of danger into play and brad probably somewhat fortunate that he didn't find that creek edge came up just short of it and that leaves him with a a lengthy jump putt which he's put to about 25 to 27 feet beth from 66 can he ring it up? Oh my gosh! No way! Talk about <laughs> taking advantage of a good break. This is why, this oh is, my if you notice the best players in the world, when they catch a good break, I mean, I'm going to say eight times out of ten, they're going to make the course pay for it. Now, he got two good breaks on the drive, and he just hit the band initially with that putt, and it was just the putter doesn't know how to not go in. I mean, that's just, that was so, so sick. I had to save the par, and that's a pure putt right in the middle. Those little initial early 
par saves if you're not 15 feet away can be quite puckering. That's this course. I mean, I feel like it's going to provide a lot of... <gasps> no way. Thank you. A lot of inside the circle. It, kind of right at that 30-foot oh mark, 25-foot mark. A lot of them for par. Unfortunate to see Nico miss that short when he's been so good inside the circle as I'm, of late. I mean, I know he's playing the course, but how do you think he feels if you would have told him that with his drive and Paul's drive, that somehow Paul was going to gain a stroke on him on that? That would just have... Wow. Hole three, par four, 564 foot, slightly left moving tee shot. Obviously you can see all these tiny trees and you want to land right here. If you can get here, that is prime landing zone. Paul, you know all about prime. If you get into this creek on your first or second shot, obviously that is out of bounds. There are a couple trees to contend with on the approach, but all in all, this is a very difficult and very rewarding par four. A lot of these guys are going to be clubbing down, clubbing down to a fairway driver because of fast driver with how far these guys throw. Maybe not Bradley. You can get to that mm -hmm. creek long, and that is out of bounds. Basically hit the gap and then kind of scramble from there because even if you're right in the middle of the fairway, your upshot is going to be a little bit obscured. And you can see Ricky just pulled his drive a little bit right, kicks left, and that's kind of in the position where you don't really have a good chance for the birdie anymore. Take the kicks. Thank you. That kick maybe helps Paul's angle on the second shot. And Nico a bit tentative, maybe a, a direct result of the miss putt on the prior hole. Brad looking like he's going with wide rim driver. Oh, I oh, just a bit too much inside and that hard kick right puts him in a really tough spot. Kind of sloppy ground play on this fairway as well. As you can see here, Nico is going to have to Jerry. be light on his feet to not sink into the mud. And from here, you want to go actually right gap, which he almost gets it, but then another oh. bad kick to the right. And there's the punishment of Dogwood Disc Golf Course. And you're going to see it for the next 16 holes. Bradley with an, nice a, a smart... That was, that was pretty good, actually, from here. <laughs> <laughs> He's pumped right, about yeah. it. Thank you, Bradley, for the course update. Oh, oh boy. Ricky getting aggressive trying to cross the creek and hey, the paying the price. I don't know if there's going to be any opportunity to save the par from out there. That seems like a really tough place to be. Very aggressive play here. He's just got to clear. Yeah. Okay. And he does, yeah. Yeah, he's got an open look from just about the edge of the circle for the par. It's a good recovery shot. This looks brutal. Yeah. Do not want to be in there. Uh, no. No. And that's the penalty. You know, that second shot out of position. You got to just pitch up to the bridge and then putt across and take your four. And, and as a result, Ricky's going to definitely be dropping those strokes. And Paul somehow finds a way through the trees. That's going to be a short putt for the birdie. Your shots are good, Nico. So Bradley in a position to go Tomahawk and now big sidearm Anheuser from there. That opens up the gap as it flexes back and a great shot. And that's in the fairway though. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how this course is. You could be right in the fairway and still have to manufacture some sort of like scramble shot to the green. Let's see if Nico can have a short memory here. Knock this one down. Yes, that's a great bounce back putt. Outside the circle saves the par.
play Free Eagle or Albatross, whatever. Uh, I believe that was Tracker, Flight, Frequency, Stealth, and Flex. It sounds like the world's most awesome dodgeball team name. It's just like all the members of this. <laughs> that or maybe a paintball team. Hole four, par four, four 474 foot dog leg right. They call this hole the knee. It is shaped like a man sitting on a bench. You want to get around the corner just barely enough to be able to see the basket where the drone is now. You don't need to get a bunch of distance on this hole and if anyone's trying to bite off more, you can really put yourself out of position early. Most players are going to go with the forehand or maybe the backhand putter. Again, it's maybe 220 feet to the ideal landing zone. Paul's going with a uh, mid-range here. Trying to keep it in the fairway, but gets kind of a rude kick to the right. Yeah, and that's that's not looking good. Left side it opens up a bit more. Left right side early definitely is the the toughest place on the hole to get that birdie still. Love the commitment to Nico's Anheuser shots. Yeah. That tree didn't like it much, but mm -hmm. the way right out of his hand, you can see that it's on that Anheuser has nothing but no choice but to go left or right. Okay, so. It, uh, no one's throwing forehand here. Maybe Ricky will, uh, but... Yeah, I kind of like the way that it opens up high to get a little bit more distance down there, mm -hmm. which makes scrambling a little bit easier. Bradley not going high, just more of a driven mid-range, and that's going to be early as well, but he might be able to work with it. So far, I don't like the backhand play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and I think Ricky's going to show you why that forehand play really sets up well the way it just moves right. This might be a little bit too fast for the fairway. Yeah, he, he, he can't throw it that hard. You really have to just kind of pick an angle and just throw like that 60% speed, maybe even less than that. Yeah, good shot, Nico. Yep. Nico back into the fairway. Pig? Yeah, this is a long shot for the pig. Yeah, I think Ricky's just kind of conceding the well, what am I talking about? No, that's no concession. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, he hit those deep trees off the drive, which actually kind of squares up the fairway real nice. Mm -hmm. These guys aren't but 250, 200 feet from the pin. And that pine straw action gives the disc a lot of play if you get the nose angle right on your approach. So, like, Ricky drove that pig into the ground, but he still got another 60 feet of slide. Paul's going to have to get real creative from the left side now. So if you want to go re-watch Paul's shot, you can see him kind of come out of the shot before the stroke was finished, and that's where you can lose him to the left side. No, no, no. Thank you. That's fine. And that was inches from disaster. Just clear it out like that on your last shot, man. Go going with that high flex stall putt. I seem to remember him making one of those recently. That one looked like it was heading further straight into the hole, but a little bit short. Yeah, but great yeah. bid. Ricky from 50, maybe 45, coming up a bit low. Last birdie option. Mm. Not going to work out for this group. Very surprising. This hole was not playing that difficult mm -hmm. today. Yep, just the 12th most difficult hole. 3.85 average. And yeah, 41 players out of our 140 player field were able to secure the three. Definitely surprising to not see at least one of the, these guys grab the birdie on hole four. As we move to hole five, wouldn't be surprised if no one birdies this one. This one is very difficult. 306 feet and it plays going right, but this gap that you see here is about seven feet wide, but it is completely blind from the tee. The best angle is gonna be the turnover with a mid-range, maybe even a putter. Um, there's also a far left high sidearm flex shot that uh, people are calling the Nate Perkins route, but I'm not quite sure anyone in this card is interested in that line. Go forward, push. See, this looks great, but you just 
you have to catch that, you know, that little gap that you were talking about, that seven foot wide gap. I do think that the backhand opens that gap up kind of nice. Yeah, it, it does. It does better than the than it does for the forehand, that's for sure. But even even so, it, a seven foot wide gap is hard to hit when you can see it. We can't see that gap from the tee, so it's it's a very very difficult and specific shot. Almost. I think. Yeah, almost is a good way of calling it. Even Ricky going with the backhand, very surprising, but he has been a little bit erratic with that sidearm. Yeah, the speed of this doesn't really match Ricky's preferred speed. Good commitment. Let's just see. Right through oh, there. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Oh, my gosh. Look at that ground play as well with the pine straw. That's incredible. Hit the lottery. <laughs> yeah, really. No, you but. didn't. You cured that, my friend. Yeah. That, that was picture. That's perfect. hitting the lottery if you know the lottery numbers and you just put them in. <laughs> You'll see this a lot. People going a bit deep there on their up shots, especially when they get kicked right or left because you need speed to hit those little windows. It kind of like that little ditch behind the basket presents maybe an opportunity to get a little bit more aggressive with your putt because you really can't get punished more than like. 25 feet away from the basket, and maybe even less than that. I was actually trying to get to the ditch. That's sick. How'd you get out and of that? There you go. You can hear Paul. He, that's a great backstop. Nico, just a little flick of the wrist. That's going to be parked for the birdie. Or for the park, excuse me. Feels like a birdie, almost. <laughs> just scrambling. <laughs> So it'd be a great save from Paul. To that right side is definitely the more obstructed yeah. area. Yeah, you're not going to see many go in and come yeah, out with red. a par. That's good, save. good work there from Macbeth. Quality. Thank you. Ooh, wow. That used a lot of different parts of the basket to stay in. It's a pretty good catching device that we throw at. I'd agree with you, like 99.9% .9 of the time. And Ricky hopes that it catches this, because that is one of very few birdies on the day. That is a fantastic drive. Almost just play it to here and run it. Averaging a half above a half stroke over par, so you're gaining strokes in the field with a, a two on hole five. But if you want to stay with the field, you're going to want to pick up the two on hole six, a par three, 243 foot hole. There is a little bit of a, a slightly tight gap, but it shouldn't really be too intimidating for these guys here. A missed tee shot, however, could find its way into this out of bounds ditch. But other than that, there's just a few trees on the green to contend with. If you get over that ditch and you make it down here, you could find yourself in a tricky spot on the green, but for the most part, this feels like a must get on this very difficult course. And Ricky just ripping putter right at it and almost hitting the pad under the basket. That was a great drive. Yeah, never never left the middle of the fairway right there. All going for the... Oh... I was going to say the flex play, but it never flex, and that kick right is going to draw all those trees that are near the basket into play on that putt. That's going to be an extremely challenging birdie putt. Get lucky. Yep, there's the look. And a kick left, maybe. And he says, I love seeing it do that. <laughs> Getting a little lucky on that right side. He pulled it a little bit, but had the right line, the right speed. Sometimes that happens, especially on a wooded course. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a course where sometimes you'd much rather be two feet off your line than two inches. Get unlucky. Oh, I almost just Brad called the get unlucky. <laughs> That's just so so pure and so yeah. pretty to watch that flight. Short putt for the birdie. And 
Paul from 42 feet. Can he find a gap? Go. Not this time. And the Neeks are switching to the spin putt and it just stays in the basket for the birdie. The one thing I really like to switch back to Bradley's drive he started it on the left-hand side, and he worked that disc from mm -hmm. left to right, making that gap as big as possible. Ricky went right down the center, peered it. But I feel like the more impressive shot was Bradley working that from right to left, just kind of clinical in how to make that gap as big as possible. He's a specialist. You know, when he when he's throwing a shot, he's not just trying to hit the gap. He's trying to, like he did, he mentioned earlier in that little video, is that he... He's focused on the exact angle so the disc does the right thing on the ground. And that's next level stuff. That shows the, the, the execution that he has is, is, is top notch. Hole seven is a par four, 420 foot, right to left turning shot where players are gonna throw most likely a flip up fairway driver or maybe even a high of fastly thrown mid-range to try to get up and eh, probably not mid-range but you're trying to get up to this area right here about 70 feet short of the ditch is a really good landing zone from there it's just a pitch onto the other side of the ditch a good tee shot sets up a pretty routine approach but if you are off at all this hole is going to test your scramble game overstable fairway driver for ricky and this is very overstable There's yep and good skip perfect and I like that he didn't try to bite off too much. There's no point in, in his game plan to try to throw a much faster disc. Just get around the corner, be in the fairway, and then go from there. And I've said this before on coverage. Nico switches his grip up from power grip to fan grip, and he likes to actually go to a faster disc with that fan grip, get a little ground play. It's slower arm speed, slower spin and he still stays insanely accurate. It's a hard thing to switch between grips in the middle of the round. Bradley a little bit too tight. Gonna be in the woods to the left. And this is a very understable fairway driver. He's trying to flip this thing up, get a big skip. Oh, oh. come on, give me that last skip. Get a little bump at the end. What the hell it looks? I feel like a really great drive could get into that ditch. We haven't seen it yet, but... That would be such a big shot. And the risk of going for that is to give yourself a 75-foot putt. So it's like, is it worth the risk of the, of the really fast kick into the woods if you miss your line going with a high-speed shot? Well, here's a great shot right in the middle of the fairway. He's going from a knee with a big Anheuser over it, so... I mean, you're scrambling from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Might as well. Oh, you gotta be kidding. I, I, but the, I think the percentages of scrambling from where Ricky was is way better than, I've been off to the left here and there's just really no way to get to the basket. And yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see this weekend throughout the way it's played if anyone gets aggressive on it. But Brad with a nice, from the knee, Anheuser flick. And this is a little testy 35 footer downhill, a little stabber, <laughs> got it. Nice. Not making it easy on himself though. That was a fairly routine upshot. I'm not, I'm not sure if he was trying to maybe throw that in for the eagle and it slipped out left. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that was a little work, but. Yeah, it definitely feels like this stretch between six and seven you really want to walk away from those two holes with five strokes. It's the two of the easiest holes on the course. And Dogwood's really not much in the business of, of giving strokes to players. So when it, when it offers you an opportunity, it's important to take star it. Yep. And that is our, the first star frame for our group here. Frame, <laughs> So, of course, that will be $25 to edgediscgolf.org. On to hole eight. This is the second most difficult hole on the course. 
a brand new pin placement, par three, 400 feet, right to left breaking fairway. And there is just a series of three or four of these gaps that are each about eight feet wide at the, the widest. And then from there, it breaks back up the hill to the right. I don't know if there's any other play than the forehand Anheuser down the middle. Well, you could try to throw a backhand flip up shot down the middle as well, but it definitely closes the gap. And I think that's going to leave you circles edge left if you make it through the gap yeah. correctly. Yeah. If you really want to just park it, then yeah, the, the sidearm Anheuser is to play for sure. Nico going flip up play, and that's going to kick off to the right, and he's going to have to scramble for the par. And it's a position that everyone at this point in the round is very familiar with. Yeah, it's going to be very rare for the whole tournament for any of these guys to throw a shot and have a comfortable upshot straight to the basket. I mean, that's just, it's either going to be on a par three to where you're putting mm -hmm. for birdie, but on the par fours, I mean, the fairway quote is, <laughs> yeah, it's, is about it's 10, a foot, yeah, fairway. 10 foot wide at points. Yeah, there's not a place really on this course where you're really ever like completely comfortable. Yeah, and honestly, a lot of players wouldn't even, would rather be a little bit off the fairway rather than right in the middle because that creates a tougher upshot as far as just a straight shot. A lot of people like to bend it from left to right or right to left. They're a little bit more comfortable with that shot. <laughs> you say that now, but when I said that in our practice round, you were making fun of me for it, making the same exact point. But I totally agree with you. I can go from professional to having a little fun with my buddy <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> and Ricky's done a great job putting that under the Brad, basket. He's not going to be the least bit concerned there. and can take his par to hole nine. Bradley, however, looking like he's going to go with the sidearm roller. Oh, that just squared it up from the moment it I left mean, his hand. That is so brutal. Bummer. Yeah, the practice round, that's... Prime guy. I'm <laughs> Mr. Euleberry. <laughs> You're Yules right now. You don't get ahead of yourself. And Beth just jump putting his approach. Brad says, We'll try this again. This time we'll keep it in the air. Just a bummer of a bogey. Mm -hmm. It's just always so rude when a, a three inch wide sapling just squares up a flick roller. Nico <laughs> surfing the ground there, staying balanced. To any of our newer viewers, a uh, player inside the 10 meter circle, if they fall forward before their putt comes to rest and do not establish balance, that is considered a footfall. And so we will have three pars and one casualty on hole eight. Probably about the norm for the hole. Yeah. and. and this is one that we kind of were making predictions before the tournament started at plus or minus 12 birdies for the weekend. I said 12 is probably a good number, but five players were able to pick up the birdie in round one. Really impressive. Garrett Gerthy, you almost aced it. Chris Dickerson, Matt Oram, and Eric Oakley. Definitely a birdie worthy of calling out. On the whole nine, par three, 351 foot dead straight shot that Ends up a little bit right side of dead center, but low ceiling, pretty generous left to right width on the fairway though. Couldn't be a fairway driver for most of these guys. This is one of the bigger fairways on the course. I say fairway driver and Ricky, is that a putter? No, it's like not a putter. Range. Yeah. Great shot. Well, that was probably a rock, but man, that was a beautiful shot. I dig it. I'll take that shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would you? Uh, I would never throw a rock backhand on this one, but I would take the result, yeah. Throw better, man. Nice little pep talk there from Nico to Nico. Mm-hmm. I feel like this shape really... Oh, this is... Is he going with putter? The shape really fits the flight that Macbeth likes to throw. Dead straight. Yeah. 
I, yep. <laughs> yeah, that dead straight shot wow. normally. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was a Luna. Yeah, and hmm. Bradley going with the uh, the more common play for for players who come out here and get their rounds in here at Lindsay Park. Going to go with a driver. Oh, no. Man. That is a disastrous way to follow up oh the bogey on eight. Nine feels like one of those. Oh, I grabbed it with my left hand. Oh, no, Bradley. Oh, no. Yeah, I appreciate you. Okay. I don't even know what he means by I grabbed it with my left hand. I'll say, he, okay. Maybe like a branch or something or. Nice. Shot. Oh, wow. Good scramble sidearm. That should save the bogey, but yeah, that's a tough way to f finish the back nine at even par. Yeah, one of the easier, I guess, holes. I mean, there's not a lot of trouble on the hole. The yeah. one bad thing that you can do is what he did is hit the initial tree there on the left. Otherwise, you should be able to get up the fairway a fair amount, and he was even mm -hmm. able to get up and down from where he was on his second shot. So, I mean, 351 tunnel shot, it's... Kind of a surprisingly low average, honestly. This the third easiest hole in the course, 2.69 average. Normally, that's a figure that we're getting on like a 250 foot wide open hole. Um, but yeah, 2.69. The field played pretty well on that. 41 percent of the field wow. able to secure the birdie well. into yeah, the back the nine. Right. Probably from all those tight holes. Finally, there was something a little bit more wide open, and everybody was like, "Oh, so easy." Yeah, the course kind of relinquishes its grip on you for a moment, and a lot of players able to take advantage of that. And as we take a look at the leaderboard here, we have Casey White with a six down front nine, Chris Dickerson, and myself, and a slew of other players at four under on the front nine heading to the back nine which is a little bit more difficulty um a little bit well, i guess a little bit more difficult you think it's a little more difficult well either way we got nine more holes coming right up for you guys thanks so much to the founders club you know what you guys mean to this broadcast and we love you for it for yules and big germ front nine texas states disc golf championship we out